Welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards under a dollar. I'm David, and today we're going to learn how tokens and counters work. Now, tokens are often creatures that are not represented by a card, while counters are used to denote an increase or decrease in power and toughness. Now, magic is quite a complicated game, so we're not going to be looking at all the rules, such as for non creature tokens or things such as charge counters, just the most basic forms of tokens and counters so we can use them in our first games. Let's have a look at tokens first. Tokens always come from cards, even though they're not represented by the cards themselves. When you're prompted to place a token onto the battlefield, you'll be told how many, what their power and toughness is, what color, and the creature type of the token. When, then you will take those tokens from outside the game and put them onto the battlefield. Now, tokens can be represented by anything as long as both players remember what the token represents. An example of a token producing card is Dragon Fodder. When you cast this sorcery, you put this card into the graveyard, and then you take two 1-1 one, one goblin tokens and put them onto the battlefield. Here you see two examples of these tokens. Another example is Doom Traveler. Now, this is just a regular creature on the battlefield, but when it dies, it gets put into the graveyard, and we get to put down a 1-1 one, one flying spirit token onto the battlefield. As we saw in the last video, Doom, Travel Doom Traveler's ability is a triggered ability. As you may have noticed, tokens are a great way to get more creatures on the battlefield than you normally would for the amount of cards you use. For the rest, creature tokens are actually exactly the same as other creatures on the battlefield. The only difference is that when a token leaves the battlefield, it ceases to exist. So if it goes into the graveyard, it goes to the graveyard, then disappears. If it gets returned to your hand, it also disappears. Now we can have a look at counters. There are three types of counters. Plus one plus one counters increase the power and toughness of a creature. A minus one minus one counters conversely reduce the creature's power and toughness. And finally, we have reminder counters that remind us of something, but it doesn't really matter very much right now. What? Counters are usually represented by dice or colored stones. An example of a spell which produces counters is battle growth. Let's say we have a Doom Traveler. He's a 1-1. One, one. He's on the battlefield. Now we cast battle growth and target the Doom Traveler and place a plus one plus one counter on him. From this point onward, as long as Doom Traveler is on the battlefield and as long as the plus one plus one counter is on him, he will be a 2-2. Two -two. You can actually stack this and put multiple plus one plus one counters on a creature growing it to titanic size. Scar is basically the same spell, except it places minus one minus one counters on a creature. This is ideal for bringing our opponent's creatures down to size. It's also nice to remember is if we put these minus one minus one counters on a creature and it reduces its toughness to zero or less, it will die, even if it is indestructible. Pretty sweet. A benefit of counters is that they always stay on the battlefield once they are placed throughout the game. However, should the card leave the battlefield, the counters will be removed as well. Well, that's all there is to tokens and counters. As we saw, tokens are usually nothing more than physical representations of creatures that don't have a card while counters are physical representations of increases and reductions in power and toughness. Thanks for watching, I'm David, this was Budget MTG Dex. Join us next time as we have a look at how planeswalkers work.